obviously disappointed we fell short today. Had every opportunity to win a football game versus a tough conference opponent, and we didn't. Um, all three phases could have been better, and you know fell short of our, our long-term goal in the season. Um, disappointed, and you know lack of execution in a lot of spots, yeah, but gave ourselves the opportunity. The team continues to fight and, and claw every single week. And this week, we didn't find a way to finish the game the right way, as we had over the previous weeks. I talked to the guys in the locker room post game. Um, you know, our, our long-term goal that we had reached out to, to win the conference championship uh, is no longer attainable, and that and that hurts, and it should hurt. Um, we're eight and three, with a chance to be nine and three next week, and find a way to win a tenth game on the season. But. Uh, yeah, not good enough. I'll go back immediately following this because we do have a short week. Watch this film, learn from it, and uh, start preparing for uh, Temple. I believe penalties kind of in succession there on that drive, about like seven minutes or so. Did you take issue or argue any of them? The, it was, I guess, the illegal man down, or ineligible man downfield on the first down catch, then the, uh, the first punt to the, to the I think it was an illegal formation. formation. Um, you know, that's, I believe in my eight years here, that's the fourth um, RPO where we've had a legal man downfield. Um, so, I, you know, where we, I'm not going to sit here and question the officiating. Um, the pump formation, you know, we've practiced it. I, I you know, uh, without giving you a clear, I haven't had a chance to go back and see. I, I thought we were, and it's something we've obviously practiced, and obviously we're not where we need to be. And what was the third one? Yeah, um, it got pretty chippy in there. Um, they called it on um, arguably one of our smartest and best players and leaders. So, um, you know, it's whatever they see last. We need to walk away from that stuff. Um, so um, we've got to be better. We've, you know, we've been top 20 in the country over the last four years, and least amount of penalties. And, you know, this crew had been uh, least amount of penalties called in the conference. And then, um, yeah, whatever happens, happens. I'm, we got to play better in order for the uh, penalties not to be an issue. How do you still have to challenge with an offense that balance? They run really effectively the first two and a half quarters. I imagine you guys bring guys in the box and they start throwing it downfield whenever they want, basically. Yeah, you know, we, you know, we knew they were going to try to come in and they, they, they had obviously a lot of success running the football in the first half. Um, and then when they took their shots on their one on ones, they won them and we didn't. We didn't make plays on the ball. And, it's just call what it is, you know, and then we had some third down chances to get off the field, Matt, and I think that's, you know, you look at reality, what was, you know, they're going to make some plays, they got a lot of talent, um, but we didn't, and then that third, you know, you go back to even the third and long, um, I, I thought we had every opportunity there, we, we had a guy that uh, had a bust in, in coverage, and they, they were able to have success on that play, and you know, and I think going back to like even with what we did offensively, find ways to win the one on ones, right? Hit those those shots, those explosives, and you know, SMU did and we didn't, and that's probably why the final result is what it is. Right after, right after a loss like today, and you realize that the, the conference championship is no longer attainable. What is the conversation like with, with you guys after that realization? Yeah, like I said to them in the locker room, it, it it's, it's you're supposed to be disappointed. You should feel pain, and they do. You know, I'm not. This is not one of those games where I just berate them um, because they are hurting. They are uh, disappointed. You feel really bad for those seniors um, that have poured their heart and soul, especially those that have been a part of this program for a long time. And the last game at the Simmons Bank Liberty Stadium, um, and, and and we need to learn from this. There's going to be a lot of film to learn from, um, but the season is not over. The end goal that we sh set out for, like we will every single year. Um, there's no longer attainable, but we've got a lot of football left. And, you know, you find a way to get your ninth win on the road versus Temple, which we know has uh, been a challenge. And then you find a way to go win your football game. And, um, look, I, I'm because we didn't win the championship, I'll, I'll sit here and say, yeah, we, we've got to be better. That's not good enough. Uh, if you win ten games on a season or find a way to win nine and then go into a bowl with the ten, chance for ten, we still got stuff to play for. And our guys will continue to swing, and that's told them to hold their heads up high, make great decisions tonight, and come ready to work tomorrow. When you know that's a fine line between winning the ones that you're supposed to and getting over the ones that arguably are the, the tougher opponents, is 
there a common theme between what the difference has been for that same judge? No, well, that's, we didn't find that, you know, and they're all, I, you know, I guess whatever you guys consider what the ones we're supposed to win to, now that's, they're all hard, right? I mean, um, they're all going to be tough. That's the nature of college football. The parody in, in, in this whole thing um, is, is so unique. And um, I understand the expectations at Memphis. I absolutely do, and I love it. I, uh, our expectation is to compete for a conference championship. That's my expectation of our program and our team. And so every single one, whether it's Charlotte, Tulsa, SMU, um, whoever it may be, right, UTSA, um, they're all going to be tough games because of parody in college football with what this portal's done, with what NIL's done. Um, but there's, you know, the common theme is we didn't execute in the games of our losses. Mizzou, we had an opportunity to beat Missouri on the road, and we didn't. And, uh, you know, it was a lack of execution. And, you know, and, you know, look, I always, you guys know, I always put things on me. Um, we've got to be better in all phases of our organization in order to find ways to win those football games. We have lost games. Uh, SMU will probably end up being a top 25 team here next week. And so the, the three losses, unfortunately, are to or whoever it is, but are possibly top 25 ranked teams. And I've been a part of this program long enough to know that uh, when I see good football, um, have we had some close games against teams that aren't ranked in the top 25? Sure, we have. But we won those games in the past. Maybe we haven't. So um, we'll continue to learn from every win and every loss and find ways to get better. Yeah, I mean, I think we had obviously yeah, they were they, they moved it pretty effectively. It wasn't you know early in, in it was some missed tackles and then the breaking through on the run game. Um, we had a couple missed fits, but then um, you know going back and look at it, I'll look at you know were we just not in the right uh, play call? Were we not you know not making an opportunity to make a play on the ball? Um, you know, I don't you know from my coverage standpoint, you sit there and say was it just? I don't know if we saw guys wide open. Um, do we need to just improve some of those things? Absolutely. And, you know, John, I don't want to sit here and say, well, this play and that play. Um, I'll, within the hour, I'll be back looking at it and figure out what it was and, and how we can shore that up. Um, because, you know, at times when we were playing good defense, you know, we had to give ourselves the opportunity. And then, you know, a couple of those drives are bam, bam, bam. And it's, uh, you can't, that's hard to do. Uh, we know SMU is an explosive team. Um, they've won, I think, the average conference win had been by 30, more than 30 points each game. Um, but it, that, that's no excuse, and, and we've got to find ways to be able to not give up points so quickly. We've got to find ways to get off field. we got no takeaways this game, um, and all those things you know, add up and hurt you. Ryan, did the fact that this is probably the last shot at SMU since they're leaving the league, did that really – did you guys talk about that at all this week? Did you guys talk about it? No. I mean, we, we tried truly just to focus on the next game. Um, the players knew what was at stake this week. Um, you know, more so than, you know, we'll just, hey, here's the next opponent, here's what we do. But we never sit there and say, hey, this is the last shot. Um, our guys are internally motivated enough um, to come out and, and fight. And, you know, I, I think that's one of those things that doesn't have to be a narrative with our young men just to go out. Um, if there was a lack of motivation, absolutely. We'll, we'll find different ways and um, to get them going and, and, and get them moving in the right direction. But. No, well, they knew. They knew. Just hey, this is SMU. Uh, those guys have been around, knew the, the rivalry and the importance of this game, regardless. And um, yeah, uh, wish we had the opportunity to continue playing them. But uh, they're a good football team. They're you know their other other losses were to TCU and Oklahoma, and they've blown out a lot of teams in our conference, but not good enough by us today. In terms of that, is there head enough for the ACC? I can't hear you. In terms of that, they're headed up. Yeah, you know, Jeff, I, to be quite frank, I think if you took the uniforms off every team in our conference and just said, okay, who's who, I think most people would sit there and say, not a whole lot of difference. Um, SMU has done a very nice job of recruiting. They've done a very nice job of adding talent. But, I, you know, I don't think anybody went out there today and said, man, Memphis just looks mismatched or that looks like a major Power 5 team versus – no. Um, and I think, you know what, look, we lined up for Charlotte and I looked over and I said, my goodness, those D-line are bigger than I thought they were. You know, and so I think that's what we're going to see from here on out. 
even with the, the new conference moving forward. Um, and, you know, that's my job is to continue to um, add pieces to the puzzle so we can go out and, but when you go, find ways to win those games. And, um, but yeah, look, I, I think throughout, you know, and even versus Mizzou, Mizzou's got great players. But I don't think anybody, you know, take off the uniforms and I think you sit there and say, okay, it's relatively all the same and no different than um, most of the teams in our conference, most teams that we play. Um, but look, I, I do know this, and our guys got heart, and that, that's, look, that there's no such, no, no such thing as moral victories. Um, but we know we're capable of competing with any team in the country, and we know that we, we've got to find ways to continue to improve because two more football games, um, and our, our guys will continue to swing. Yeah, they they are, and that's what I appreciated about them. It's um, they they should be frustrated, and sometimes, um, but I've never felt like I'm pulling teeth to get our guys to watch film. I've never felt like I'm um, having to motivate them to come come in and, and you know take care of their bodies. I've never felt like we've had to um, pull in, in any direction. I mean, the, the guys they they love the game of football. They love this program, uh, and they love each other, and so that's motivation enough I mean they're, they're, some of these guys I know I'm, I'm going to head back to the office like I said and sure enough there'll be 10 guys back there taking care of their bodies and getting ready for next week and that speaks volumes about the character of the young men in the locker room you obviously talked about the Mizzou game a couple times is that when, when you lose a game like this do you think back to the games of the other losses or is this feel like well the question got asked so I was sitting there yeah. trying to figure out you know in my brain I think in any losses right um you sit there and say was was there a common theme and and I'll always do that. It's my job is to sit back and say, okay, as I reflect on every game, what are things that get cleaned up? And I think sometimes you say, okay, you know, th maybe this could have been different here. Maybe that could have been different there. Um, but I, I know on this one, I'm going to go back and say, okay, like any any game, right? That's not to sound like coach speak, right? Like these eight plays, man, um, one, one or two will be on special teams, right? Yeah, a handful on offense and a handful of defense. And those are the things they sit there and say, how do we get those cleaned up during the week and how do we improve? Um, and, and so, right, what, what's the common theme? And I'll, I'll see, it. Hey, is this something that's carrying over? What I didn't, you know, there's a couple things that hurt us uh, in the past based off of, you know, our system on offense, our system on defense. On the and I did those things so systematically didn't hurt us today, but other things did. And so um, that's why we got to come out and continue to game plan the right way. The offensive line did pretty well in pass blocking today. Only threw it in one sack, but in the run game, had a difficult time getting that going. Only 2.8 yards per rush. Someone that knows the ins and outs of the offensive line, explain how that happens. Yeah. So first off, SMU was number six in the country in sacks. So credit to our guys. Um, for by, battling and fighting and, and sticking in there. And then obviously, our, you guys saw Mac Pounders went out and we had to reshuffle the old line again. Um, Terrence McLean came in. Um, Xavier Hill moved over to tackle. And so proud of those guys for sticking in there. Um, the run game starts with everybody. Like, uh, I've got to be better and putting us in better situations with play calling uh, in the run game. I've got to uh, make sure the tight ends are doing what they're supposed to, the wide receivers, the quarterback, everybody. The, r the run game is not just on the old line. Um, was it good enough? No. By no, no stretch of imagination, the offensive line will know that there's um, ways to clean that up. And, you know, they did play, you know, they were one high team. Um, you know, they, sh they showed some man free today, which um, they hadn't shown. They showed, you know, in the first half, they showed three cornerback blitzes. And, and over, um, over nine games, they had shown two. And so, you know, there's just some different things that we've got to be ready for and, and continue to put our guys in, in right preparation. But, um, and the, the fault of the O line put that on me, and I'll, I'll find a way to get it cleaned up. But look, I was proud of the way they battled pass protection, um, and we'll, we'll continue to find ways to find holes in the run game. Uh, just ask fifty-one pass attempts. Was that uh, a game plan thing? That something you saw you could exploit, or was that just how the, the game went? I think it goes back. One, we knew we'd have to probably score some points. Um, so, yeah, not saying you can't score points running the football. And then with what they're giving us defensively, it goes back to the question, you know, these teams that are one high, shells, right, there's, there's going to be, they're taking away the run with a safety or playing man free or an extra hat in the box. So then what's that, that next level, right? And you guys saw there were some, you know, 
one-on-one -on -one coverage and that so we have to take advantage of those and um you know seth did a great job all game but you know, he knows there's a handful of plays that he would like to have back and, and throws and um but yeah a good game plan we were about 50 50 on the call sheet with what we wanted to do and and you know no fault i thought the guys did there's a handful of plays we could get back and we'd be better off thanks Rush. thanks guys so